Good morning. Let's take a second look at the subject of peace. It isn't peace if there is still a war going on. I've often said when I've been preaching that peace is about just much more than just the absence of conflict. And of course that's true. But let's not ignore the reality. If there is serious external need, hunger, poverty, disease, war, conflict, oppression, violence, exploitation, homelessness, any of those things, then peace is a long way away. And scripture recognises that. In the first book of Kings, chapter 4, we have a description of Solomon's reign. For he ruled, we read, over all the kingdoms west of the river Euphrates, from Tifsar to Gaza, and had peace on all sides. During Solomon's lifetime, Judah and Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, lived in safety, everyone under their own vine and under their own fig tree. Spending time in the garden has been a lifesaver for many people this year. And BMS tell us the story of Sarab. They tell us Sarab is no different. In his garden he grows carrots, pumpkins, cucumbers, the sort of things you'd plant in your vegetable patch in the UK. Except Sarab isn't in the UK. His village is in Afghanistan, where resources are scarce and the threat of the Taliban never goes away. You wouldn't think growing vegetables could transform a life, but for Sarab that's exactly what's happened. Sarab and his family live in a small village high up in the mountains. The temperature can drop as low as minus 40 degrees in the winter. Women tend the fires in their one-room houses built into the mountainside, while the men shovel snow off the roofs to stop it melting through. There's no Tesco to pop down to where you can buy whatever food you need. No classes in school to teach you the basic food groups and how to eat a balanced diet. Here you just have to do what you must to keep yourself and your family alive. Sarab has often struggled to get food on the table to feed his family. BMS works in rural mountain villages in Afghanistan to give people access to maternal health classes, information on clean water and sanitation, and to equip people to confidently grow their own food. We didn't know anything about vegetables or what they all were, Sarab says, but now we know all about them and their importance to our bodies, and we all want to eat vegetables. Thanks to BMS, Sarab has been able to grow a flourishing crop of healthy food and make sure that his family never goes without. He knows how to feed his children well to make sure they grow up strong and healthy, to keep them from dying from malnutrition like so many children in the village before them. Peace includes, perhaps it even begins with, security, our basic needs. Those needs are to be safe, to have food, water, shelter, clothes and freedom from fear. And that's why, as Christians, we work so hard to bring those things to those who don't have them. Anything less is a betrayal of the God whom we serve. And let's be absolutely clear, striving for peace isn't a social add-on to the real gospel, calling people to faith. It isn't simply an opportunity for evangelism or the precursor to evangelism. No, Jesus fed the hungry because they were hungry. He healed the sick because they were sick. And we're not called to anything less than that. When we pray for peace, we commit ourselves to work for peace.
and that starts with those basic human needs for the sake of the love of God.